I found Proverbs very interesting, and I was reading it last night. And in the majority of all the Bible, different Bibles out there, it talks about full moon. He took his purse filled with money and will not be home until the full moon. We'll also see appointed time, but the majority of every book will say the full moon he comes. It's also interesting that the moon will be full in Gemini, which represents the husband and bride. Not the Gemini twins, but the husband and bride. It will be the fullest. It will also be full both Wednesday and Thursday at 100%. And the little boy said, Jesus is coming on a Wednesday. And then there's a, a man that says the rapture is going to be on a Thursday. Both of those days are at its fullest. I'm watching for the full moon rapture. I'm going to link videos that have dreams and visions on a full moon rapture. And then also a Bible study that talks about this word also meaning that it could be in its fullness up until the halfway point, which is also next Wednesday or Thursday. But then the following Wednesday and Thursday, there's no moon on the 22nd. And so it will show in the video that's going to be next that it could be all the way up until the 21st with the meaning of this word, which is still Wednesday. And it's still, this is the winter solstice. So it's high watch time from now until the 21st for me. Maranatha. When Jesus is coming back today, he come back to Wednesday. He coming to Wednesday. Wednesday? Where did you hear that from, baby? He just like this, he back. You keep saying that Jesus is coming back on a Wednesday. Where did you get that from? I get that from is the Jesus talking to me. This is a Bible that a lot of Christians use over in the East in Egypt and uh, in and around um, Israel, over in the Middle East, there are churches that will use the Syriac version of the Bible. And in Syriac, the word keso is a reference to the fullness of the moon. And so scholars believe that the Hebrew word kese and the Syriac word keso are related together and that that is evidence as to why this text should read full moon and not just a point in time. You'll notice when you look at the Syriac Bible that there are two texts that are in the Tanakh. First one is 1 Kings 12 verse 32 where it says, Jeroboam made a festival in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month, like the festival in Judah. That word 15th day in Syriac, in the Aramaic Peshitta, that is the word keso. And it's a reference to the fullness of the moon. Now, what's interesting is, in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 10, where it says on the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents. And the context there is Solomon is sending the people away after the Feast of Tabernacles. But the word 23rd day is also the Syriac word keso, talking about the fullness of the moon. Now that's peculiar because, like I said, it's the 23rd day after the Feast of Tabernacles. If this is correct, then it would mean that the word keso in Syriac or kese in Hebrew could refer to the time the moon is full all the way at least until the last quarter, possibly the remainder of its waning. I found some theologians that believe that this word keso can refer to the last half of the moon's cycle once it gets full all the way till it wanes. It looks like all we can prove from Scripture, though, is that it is from the time of the fullness of the moon down to the last quarter moon. We can show that from Kings and Chronicles. So it's a word that denotes either the third week of the lunar cycle or the last half of the lunar cycle from full moon back to, to new moon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the goodman is not at home, he has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed.
all those kings went to the place, and they found the earth there filled with snow, and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, Come, let us break through the snow and see. Perhaps the men that remained with Enoch are dead and are now under the stones of snow. And they searched, but could not find him, for he had ascended into heaven. We're definitely like the rapture has to do something with the moon. Because the Lord said it and I, he would not waste his breath if it wasn't important and if it wasn't so. So Luna Elea, just keep in mind like something rapture is going to have to do something with the moon. So we're going to be ascending on some special moon. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth gave me a dream. When I woke up, it was around 3 Oh, 3 in the morning or 301 when I check my watch and basically this is the dream that the Lord gave me he showed me up there a full moon I saw a full moon that's what the Lord Jesus Christ showed me hallelujah precious brothers and sisters it's sister Genevieve here and um, I just wanted to quickly get on here and um, as when I was doing the video yesterday it got um, cut short again. Um, I just wanted to clarify, I was speaking in that message, that last message about the full moon uh, rapture that the Lord had revealed to me and I wasn't finished that message but it cut out um, and I just wanted to say that uh, message, so I'll just finish from there um, what the Lord revealed to me. So basically as I shared in my video yesterday that at 8.14 uh, p.m. on the Sunday the 7th of April the Lord said to me it will be a full moon rapture now in this dream I found myself at nighttime looking out the window and what I saw when I was looking out the window was what appeared to be two moons in the sky two full moons at least that's what it looked like it may not have been now one of those moons was a blood red moon so for me being somebody that follows Jesus and looks for the signs of his coming that was very peculiar to me hi everyone you know I was really tempted to share this uh, dream vision that I had last Christmas but I was so tempted to share that but I, I just didn't feel to if the rapture didn't happen I didn't want people to get discouraged well again if you're watching this video if the rapture doesn't happen around this Christmas season the last thing I want to see I, I don't want to see any anybody get discouraged and give up Jesus is coming very very soon but uh, I, I really felt I need to share this again in light of everything that's going on in the world but especially with Israel Israel is our timepiece, but here we are in the middle of the four blood moons. There's so many, I mean, I could go on and on. There's so many prophetic pieces to the puzzle that are all coming together right now. So uh, I, I really felt compelled to share this once again. I remember in this, in this dream, it was a beautiful moonlit night in the wintertime. And I have to say that tonight as I'm doing this video, outside is a night exactly like what I saw. It's a full moonlit night. There's, we have lots of snow. There's snow on the trees. And uh, you can see very well outside even though it's at night. It was a night just like tonight. But in this dream, my wife and daughter and I were, were in our home here in... Uh, an angel appeared to us. An angel came into the room and uh, and he said, he asked us to follow him and, and to go with him because it was the rapture. It was the time of the rapture. So we, I remember going out through the door of our home and out into our yard and to my surprise when I looked out into the yard here there was the most beautiful red Santa's sleigh that I had ever seen in my life. I mean, the, I wish I could find a picture that looked like this sleigh. I don't think it's possible. It was just a, a very beautiful looking sleigh. 
you know. And the angel asked us to get in that sleigh. Again, this was so real, I can't emphasize how real this was. It was more like a vision. We got in this sleigh, and the angel pulled that sleigh, and, and we started going in that, in that sleigh. And I can remember going out to the end of my driveway, right out this way, and, and I can remember going through the air, and we were, like, I have a lot of trees on my property. They're about 50 foot tall, these trees. Um, I can remember going through the air. We were going through the air, um, and I, re I remember looking out to the side. I could see the trees. I was looking around. I was totally aware of everything. It was just so real. And I, I can remember looking out over the side, and we were like about 20 feet off the ground, and we were starting to pick up speed. Uh, going through the air, but just then I get to thinking, you know, this is so real and it, it feels so much like we're going in the rapture right now. But there's nothing in God's Word about a sand and sleigh. This doesn't make sense. And you know, as soon as I thought that, I woke up. I woke up and I was laying in my bed. And I, I have to say, I was very discouraged. I thought, I thought, well, this is it. I thought, I thought we were going to the rapture. What happened? What happened here? You know. So I'm laying there, and I'm wide awake, and I, I was really kind of disgusted. <laughs> and I said, I said, Lord, when are you going to come? You keep showing me these things about the rapture, and speaking to me, but when are you going to come? You know, I just no more than said that in, in the middle of my room. Now, this wasn't spooky or nothing. This is nothing to be afraid of. When an angel appears to you, it's not spooky. If it's spooky, well, then there's something wrong. <laughs> but in the middle of my room, there appeared uh, just a small blue light. It was about the, about the size of a marble, right in the middle of my room. A blue light. And uh, it wasn't long, and that blue light, it, it, it expanded quickly into a television screen. And in this, and the, the screen was, I'm, I'm thinking, 7 to 10 inch screen. It wasn't a real big screen, but a television screen. And there was an angel in this television screen. He was a really pleasant looking angel. He had a, he was right full of smiles. He had lots of smiles. I just got done asking the Lord, when are you going to come? And there this angel is in the, in the middle of my room. I'm wide awake, I'm telling you. This is, and I wanted to mention, this is the only vision that I saw with my eyes in my life. It's the only one. I've had lots of picture visions in my, in my head, you know. But this is the only the only vision that I could see wide awake with my eyes. You know, I wanted to clarify that. But uh, he looked at me with a big smile on his face, and he whispered, and he he pulled out a chain out of his pocket. And I, I, got, it, I got one right here. You can't see my, my uh, pocket very good. He pulled, he pulled this chain out, kind of slowly pulled it out, and there was a, a pocket watch and he whispered, and he, he waved that back and forth. Now, I'm, this is really sounding spooky, but it wasn't. <laughs> He's waving that back and forth like that, and with a big smile on his face, he whispered, It won't be long now. And just like that, poof, he disappeared. <laughs> you know, it was an awesome experience. I'm not giving any dates or anything like that. I'm not saying that the rapture is going to happen this Christmas. I'm just saying that it could. And there's a, to me, there's a very high rapture alert. I'm only sharing what God showed me. And uh, I, I don't have control over a vision or over a dream that I have, you know. Uh, to me, I, I really believe that that was from the Lord. But... Uh, it remains to be seen if the rapture will actually happen around the Christmas season, but uh, in light of the events that's going on, I tell you, uh, and, and if the rapture doesn't happen to happen over the Christmas season, 
please don't be discouraged because it could be just like in the dream that I had. I woke up and I was greatly disappointed because the rapture didn't happen. But remember what the angel said when as soon as I woke up and I and I said, well, I, I thought it was so real. When are you going to come, Lord? It won't be long now. So it, it could be that we could go through the Christmas season and, and the rapture not take place, but it not be long after the, the Christmas season. So anyways, I, I had to share that again because of uh, everything that's going on. Keep looking up. Please keep looking up. And don't give up. Jesus is coming. And uh, this world is, uh, I, I wish I could say that it was going to get better. The only way that it's going to get better is after the rapture and after the tribulation. And then when Jesus comes back and, and sets up his kingdom for the thousand year reign of Christ, that's when it's going to get better. And it's going to be, it's going to get a lot better when the rapture takes place and takes us home. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much for listening to me, and uh, God bless each and every one of you, and hopefully I'll see you in the air soon. Could be very soon. I just can't get over the night tonight. It's just such a beautiful night. It's just like in, the, in that dream. God bless you folks. You, you take care until next time. And it starts off with my family, my husband, myself, and my two small children. We were in the car uh, coming back from somewhere, and it was um, either just getting dark or like right after sunset, but the moon was out, and we could, we could see the moon, and my son points out the moon. And when I look up and I see the moon in the sky, there's an orange haze covering the moon. Um, in front of it and it's just really hard to see it but it made everything orange and hazy and then in front of that was an orange streak um, coming down diagonal like a like an orange fireball in front of that um, best way I could draw it out was like this it was like that so In my dream, after I see that and I see the sky, I then see a vision of a meteor or an asteroid um, coming towards us. Like, not in a side profile where I see it in the sky and it's falling, but now I, I'm, it's like I'm looking right at it um, and I see it coming towards us. And then it flashes to another vision and I, it's like I'm in space and I'm looking at the Earth in the world and I can see where it's going and it's aiming and the best way I could describe it was there was a, there was land masses and it kind of made like a M uh, like a capital M kind of and where the M came together right in the middle in the ocean is where it was aiming towards uh, so I see this and and when I woke up and I remembered this I immediately wrote and drew it out and so I could try to find um, this exact place. I didn't know exactly where that was in my dream, but um, I will show you when I wrote it out, it looked like this. And I wrote the ring of fire on there because once I woke up and I looked at, you know, different images of the globe, you when you see the Pacific Ocean, and you look at the ring of fire, it kind of makes like a capital M. And so, again, where that was meeting, right underneath it is where I saw it aiming. Um, I don't know if that's literal or symbolic, but I'm just reporting exactly what I saw in my dream. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Big brother, little Brother Cameron here. Today is April 16th, if I'm not mistaken. You guys, my birthday is actually in two days. Uh, it's on the 18th. I'll be turning 17 years old. Hold on, can I make it? Dang it! Alright, anyways, today is April 16th, um, 2019, and I received a dream. Like, when is the last time I had a dream? 
Like, do you guys remember I used to capture my videos 2018 Rapture Dream? I never had them anymore. I just start receiving words now. So that was pretty cool. So I haven't received a dream in so long, and it's probably because I never asked for one really, because I usually just like receive messages. But um, you guys, if it's not one thing with this weather, it's another. First, it's raining, then it's cold, then it's extremely hot. I think it's like 80 degrees today. So, um, I mean, it, it feels pretty good. I'm just chilling right now. But uh, I want to share with you all the dream that I had. So, around 11 o'clock, I went to bed. And for everyone asking, I am homeschooled. So, I can work out my own schedule when I want to do my homework all of that, you know. It's the it's the good things that come with being homeschooled, you know what I'm saying? It's the good things. But um, everybody's like, Cameron, I want to be homeschooled. And I'm like... Actual parents, you know what I'm saying? But um yeah, today is April 16th. Like I said, I keep saying that. So I want to get into this dream that I had. So I went to bed probably around like 11, 12 o'clock, just the usual. I went to bed around 11 or 12, 11 or 12. Um, and then I I have this dream, right? It's really weird. It's this it's this witch and this other guy just duking it out. I mean they just banging and so i'm trying to separate it but at the same time there is this guy with a trumpet right and when this witch and the holy spirit just reminded me of this part too it's this witch and this guy they're fighting underwater right and then this guy ends up blowing a trumpet like three times he's like doo 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 and he blows it three times or like four times and then i wake up and I was like, oh, I need to find that song because the trumpet, it was like a, it was like a song, but I don't know what song he was playing. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. So I woke up and I'm still in my dream right now. So I wake up like, and I told my brother, I'm like, Aaron, I just heard this trumpet song. He was like, oh yeah, search this, it's that song. I could never find it in the dream. So the dream totally skips to where I have my own apartment. Like, I have a bottom apartment and a top apartment. Like, I just own this whole, like, A and B. I own both of them. So, I'm going up and down the stairs and just, like, going to my apartments or whatever. And all of a sudden, I see my mom. And she's in my room. And so, I was like, oh, so you're moving in? This is your new room? And then she's like, oh, no. This isn't my room. And so, I was like, so why is your stuff in here? And she's like, oh, no, this isn't my room. And then she was actually moving out though. So I was like, I never knew she was she was living in my house. So she ends up, she's getting her suitcases packed and she's about to move out. All of a sudden, I get this extremely like, uh, how do I explain it? So in the dream, I'm with my mom, right? She's upstairs and I have a downstairs part to my apartment too. So, and I wouldn't say it wasn't a condo. It was literally an apartment. I just owned both of them up and down the stairs. I don't know why. So I ended up going in my basement or I, I'm sorry, I ended up going downstairs in like my apartment B building. And I ended up looking outside and I see a full moon like. But the thing is, it was so low that I had to like stand up on top of my chair and like look down because it was that low. But it was literally a full moon, though. And then I just had like this anxious feeling inside of me like, oh no, like this is not good. Like I just had a feeling like that's not good. And then I woke up and I woke up at 8.53 a.m. And this is the thing. When the Holy Spirit gives me numbers, I never forget them. It has not failed yet. I can do as many math problems as I want to and I always forget numbers. Oh yeah, or... Uh, 45 divided by that and like and I always forget but when the Holy Spirit gives me numbers I never forget them so I woke up at 8 53 I was extremely tired I rolled back over went back to sleep without a doubt I rolled back over went to sleep and I woke up and I had this uneasiness feeling inside of me like I should have wrote down that number that I saw immediately 8 53 I was like you right you right so um I was like thank you Holy Spirit and so uh, I think I went back to sleep. I went back to sleep because for the longest now, like ever since I made the last video that the Lord gave me, he started giving to me back to back. Whenever I get on my knees, he'll give me a message. And so whenever I feel ready that I want to receive the message is when I'll get on my knees. But I haven't gotten on my knees and received a message yet because I never asked. But I received this dream, though. And so when I received this dream, 
I was like, could this correlate with um, our sister Genevieve's dream that, or a message that she had when Jesus said, I will come at a full moon, not setting dates because obviously God can make the moon full whenever he wants to, he can make the moon blood whenever he wants to. But given the fact that what on the 19th, I believe it's going to be the, uh, hi, wherever my niece always knocks on the door. She's like, yeah, right. So I believe um, on the 19th is going to be a full moon. And then I believe the moon is always full for like two or three days. So then that's going to go right into Passover. And then that's another high watch time too. So I'm not setting dates guys, but like just hearing the trumpet blow in my dream and then seeing this full moon. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. This is what 853 means. I'm so sorry. Got the paper. I got the paper. So. I, I pray to God this is still recording because my, my storage is like, you are not about to record a 10 minute video. So I'm like, I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up. So, okay, 8.53 means a sign, finish, go and come. That's not it. It means vanish away, right? It means cause to disappear, hide and remove. If that's not the rapture, I don't know what is. And then, and then it says, leaving unwashed right it says leaving unwashed my niece always coming out here so um that's the left behind those who didn't repent and make their robes white they're going to be left behind because we're going to be leaving the unwashed and then it says hi and then it says for a long period of time and then it says destroy guys this is ridiculous I must end this video because my niece is already about to come out. Bye. My niece about to come out here and start messing stuff up. So I must just end it. So yeah, guys, it means a sign, finish, go, come, vanish away, cause to disappear, hide, remove, um, leaving the unwashed for a long period of time. And then it means destroy. Guys. You can literally look it up for yourself. 853 Strong's Concordance. What I always look my numbers up in. So, guys, like I said, I am not setting a date. So, please don't go to my comment section. You are setting a date, you false prophet. I'm not. I'm not setting a date. Like, I'm seriously not setting a date. This is just what the Lord showed me. The full moon and the trumpet. So, and then he gave me 853. And after that, I received 1144. I received 88 in just that small period of time. Like, literally, just received back-to-back, back-to-back numbers. So, um, I'm going to end this video because my storage is about to start going ballistic. So, I'm going to just end this. Um, hope this encouraged you all. Jesus is coming. Be looking up. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying look up, guys, because he's coming so soon. Be vigilant. Repent daily. Um, be in relation with him. Read the word of God. Always, always put them first. Matthew um, 6 33 says, If we put them first, everything will be added to us. So that doesn't matter if it's healing, strength, deliverance, anything. You put him first, everything else is going to follow. So make sure to put God first. And um, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. The Lord is coming. God bless. Hey, guys, this weekend's pretty interesting. Uh, do you think the rapture might be this weekend? Well, let's go study the Bible. Uh, right now, we have. Uh, April uh, 19 is it's, it's, it's Good Friday, and then the 20th is Passover, and on Sunday is Easter Sunday. But, uh, this weekend we have a full moon. Now, do you believe that the uh, rapture is this weekend, and is it possibly connected to a full moon? Well, let's go study the Bible and find out. Okay, guys, um, you can read your Bible in uh, Proverbs 7, uh, 6 to Proverbs 7, uh, 27. So basically from Proverbs 7, 6 to 27. And you can read the whole thing. Uh, it talks about a, um, a, a, um, a wife and, and she cheats on her husband while he's away. Um, uh, but it's, it's pretty, I could read it uh, really fast, but, uh, um, I got a lot to cover, so if you have time, I suggest you read the whole thing uh, in your spare time. But what caught my attention is this. In uh, Proverbs 7 and 19, it says, My husband is not home. I'm sorry, my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. 
he took his purse filled with money and will not be home till full moon. Now, my question is, first of all, uh, who is this person uh, that has money? Okay. The second question, well, um, the second uh, theory or opinion is, who is this uh, uh, woman? Um, it says here, then out came a woman to meet him. Uh, this is the, uh, this woman, who is this woman? In my opinion, this woman, uh, um, is it uh, uh, the Jews? Um, honestly, I don't know. But the question I'm trying to answer, first of all, is who is this person that has the money? Well, let's go check the other Bible verses. Okay, guys, here we have uh, Matthew 25, 14 to uh, uh, 30. And this is the parable of the talent. So uh, this is this person. A man going to, I'm oh, sorry, a man going on a journey. Um, anyway, uh, the point is that this this person is the owner of the the coins or the money. Uh, it says, uh, which is Jesus Christ. It says uh, again, it will be like a man going on a journey. You can read the whole thing yourself. I'm just going to point out that this person is the owner of the money. And in this case, he entrusted the money, the the property, or or or, or in this case. Uh, entrusted his property to them to one he gave five talents of money so um here we know we have a connection between uh, this person the owner of the money and it's is it's, it's, we know this is jesus christ um but anyway you can read the whole thing i suggest you do i'm not only pointing out uh, the the uh, uh uh the uh the fact that this person is the owner of the money and you could read that on Matthew 25, 14 to 30. So we now we know that this person is the owner of the money. Let's go read another verse real quick and, and see what we find out. Okay, guys, I have another verse here. Matthew uh, 20, uh, 1 from, uh, to uh, 16, um, the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Um, anyway, uh, we know that this person that uh, pays the workers, pays them in denarius, uh, you know, money. Uh, anyway, it says, For the kingdom of God, heaven is like a land owner who went out early in the morning to hire a man to work in a, his vineyard. The point is, you can read the whole thing yourself. I suggest you do that. Uh, but we know that this person, which is uh, Jesus Christ, um, is at the same time he he's the owner of the money. Uh, this is another verse, and in this case he pays the workers for uh, for a day's wages, but you know from different um, when they get hired at different times. But anyway, you can read the whole thing yourself. So now we have another uh, verse where it says that the uh, uh, in this case Jesus Christ also he's the 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 one who's going to be paying the the salary. But anyway, let's go see what else can, we can find. Okay, the next one is, uh, gentlemen, is uh, Luke nineteen eleven to 27. This is the parable of the ten minas. Um, but anyway, this is uh, this gentleman right here is Jesus Christ. It says, uh, a man of, and this is what he, he I'm just going to read a part of it, but I suggest you read the whole thing yourself. Uh, but which is clarifying a point. Um, says uh, this person, which I believe is Jesus Christ, talking about himself, because this is uh, what he said, but I suggest you read, it, read the whole thing yourself. But anyway, it says, uh, A man of noble birth went to a distant country. Uh, let me get this focus real quick. There we go. Oh, I'm going to repeat that again. I'm sorry. A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. So, I mean, you can read the whole thing yourself. 
Okay. Um, but the point is, the uh, um, on the Proverbs 720, let's go back and read that again. Okay, so I just presented you guys several uh, verses that identifies the person that actually has the money bag uh, in theory, um, that actually is the owner of the money, that actually pays the workers, or in, in, in so far we identified that the person with, that owns the money is Jesus Christ. So, uh, is that connected to this verse? Even thought that this is a, a referring to a wife that cheats on her husband while he's away, but the husband has a money bag that he takes his, you know, takes it with him. Um, is uh, the wife is is she the the Jews? Uh, I don't know honestly, uh, but why would uh, the verse uh, mention a specific time frame where he's going to return? Well, let's find out. I mean, I don't know, but let's go read read again. She says, and this, this is my my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money and will not be home till full moon. Now, why and why and why would it mention when he's going to return back? And who is this gentleman, uh, husband? Who is he? Well, like I said, I just presented several verses. Uh, whether they're connected to this one or not, I don't know. But I just just uh, I wanted to find out who this gentleman is that has the money bag and is returning back. So I've just read some verses. And you guys make up your mind. Um, I don't know if it's connected or not. But let's go. Um, something I found out about the full moon. Uh, just give me a second and I'll show you guys. Okay, guys. I just Googled uh, how long a full moon lasts. And according to Google, it says uh, about four days. So while, just let me focus this real quick. So while a full moon is only a moment, a moment's time, it looks to the human eye to last a length of about four days. The moon cycle takes place in the course of about a month. In the early days of each month, you can expect the full moon occurrence. But anyway, the key thing we find out here, uh, uh, let me get this on. on. The, the good thing about this is that a, the full moon, let me get this, last four days, guys. Um, so, basically, we don't know when the rapture will happen, if it does ever happen on a full moon. Whether it does or not, I don't know. I'm only showing you guys something interesting, that the full moon lasts four days. Four days! So, if it, it was, if, it, if in case a rapture w would actually happen, or not, on a full moon, um, you got four days to, you know, you, you couldn't really tell which day it would be. So, in a sense, you want to know the day or the hour, correct? Because four days is a long time to tell when the rapture will actually happen, if it does happen in a full moon or not. So that's pretty interesting, guys. Um, well, I guess it's... Um, but there you go, guys. Um, you guys make up your mind. I know we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have this uh, weekend coming up. So, and it's full moon, and we know full moon lasts for four days. And I know May 14 is when the end of the 70 year ends. And after um, May 14, it starts the 71st year of Israel. Uh, so, we only have a short time uh, window. Uh, so, there you go, guys. But at this point of the dream, I was given the opportunity uh, to see kind of from the, um, the heavens looking down on the earth. And what I saw was that I was able to see it, the globe was kind of out here like this. And I was able to see very clearly many cemeteries and graveyards. Then I was brought very close to many of these graveyards. And what I saw was a very unusual thing to me was that the ground was breaking open. Literally the dirt was breaking open kind of violently and people were coming out of the graves. I know now that that's what I saw. I saw dead people resurrected from the graves. The condition that they came out was very unusual. 
and uh, the the other thing that was unusual was that uh, one cemetery plot uh, headstone would have a person come out of the dirt and one next to it would not there it seemed to be uh, uh, a kind of a, a not not just random but kind of a categorized uh, launching so to speak of these people out of the dirt uh, again it was very okay as soon as these people uh, disappeared for a lack of words wherever they went mass hysteria began to hit the earth uh, people had the appearance of absolute despair, um, hysteria, there was pandemonium everywhere, there was mass chaos, lawlessness and fearless, or fear was working everywhere. Uh, as the mass pandemonium and despair began to permeate society, there was uh, a very unusual event that happened. Television, uh, telephone, radio, and this other unusual communication device I was able to see into many, many homes in the United States, these white boxes that were about this big that looked to be like televisions. And were, when I saw these, they were in nearly every single home in the U.S. And uh, they would have words written across them, and occasionally it would almost look as though television was playing through them. All of those uh, media devices were shut down for about a two-week period. All these things were shut down. Uh, one of the things that was happening during this uh, hysteria was many, many peoples were asking, where did these people go? What happened? And all the globe saw this event, uh, or they experienced it afterwards. What I saw in people was that literally nearly everyone I experienced had a great, great look of despair and hopelessness upon their face. Everywhere I went, there was hopelessness. Nobody seemed to be happy about living. This uh, shutdown alarmed all of the peoples, and it lasted for about two weeks. Can you imagine briefly tonight all of your communications, your telephone, computers, television, and radio being shut down for a two-week period of time? Can you imagine the hysteria? Can you imagine, you know, the inability for a supermarket to contact its suppliers to get more, more supplies or gasoline or, or transactions? I mean, just, I mean, it's, it's amazing when you begin to see it kind of unfold the depth. This lasted about two weeks. After about two weeks of time, television and radio began to be back up and running. However, it was completely different than what was previously uh, being broadcast. The broadcasts were being bombarded nearly everywhere and they were depicting a soon-to-come new government and leadership. A man would be emerging to lead us. The man finally came on the scene and he spoke with great eloquence. I wrote these things down exactly as I saw them. He spoke, he spoke with great eloquence and charisma. He was soothing and promised answers to all current issues. This man was smooth and extremely convincing, able to solve nearly all problems. He was a consummate communicator, and he explained how this removal of people was God's judgment upon them. It was very, very frightening. Uh, almost immediately, he began to communicate through large screen televisions that were strategically placed everywhere the general populace met. Now, what was strange about this is that this man's speeches and directions for the whole world had to do with new times upon us as human beings, new directives for global peace, and the need to give up current citizenship for world citizenship. At staggering rates, people were buying right into this plan that this man was releasing through the airwaves at staggering rates. No resistance. No one was fighting it. No one was saying anything publicly. I, I, I can't tell you if the airwaves were uh, controlled to the point where you couldn't come on and say certain things. It's just about like that right now in the U.S., by the way. Uh, earlier I had told someone that what it appeared to me with this despair, it was that like every person on earth had just left their mother's funeral. Everyone. Can you imagine that for just a minute? Everybody on planet Earth had to bury their mom that day and was leaving that, uh, that uh, funeral or memorial service with the weight of that. That's how people appeared. They were very, very grieving, very, very, uh, excuse me, despondent. I can tell you this, the man that I saw on the television, 
the man that could do signs and wonders and fix all the problems, I will tell you this tonight, I will never forget his face. Very unusual events happening with this band of followers. Food would multiply, very unusual things would happen. They would pray for people and people would be healed. Uh, just very, very strange things uh, that was abstract to my thinking. Well, they were in this dream, this earthquake hit and began to shake this glass building and it fell over and killed about 200 people. This earthquake was massive. And I know from what I saw with the globe shaking at this time that it was a worldwide earthquake. The earthquake hit and there was multiple uh, millions of lives lost. Millions, I mean literally millions of lives. I've never heard of an earthquake where millions of people have been killed, ever. Uh, the, the world was completely stunned. The devastation of property and loss was beyond comprehension. It could not be measured. Some regions were so destroyed that they never bothered to send uh, rescue teams in. That's how devastated they were. Now I want to tell you some things that began to happen at this point. This earthquake that hit caused a massive change in weather patterns. At this moment, what began to happen was the normal weather patterns completely changed. The, the, the patterns for winter became summer, summer became winter, and you might have a day of snow and a day of heat. The world was in total chaos in its weather patterns. Predicting weather was totally uh, impossible. You, there, it, was, it was just uh, useless to try to forecast weather. Predictions did not work. Some very unusual things began to happen almost immediately. Crops began to perish, droughts and famine. I was able to see all over the globe the most fertile areas, the most fertile farming areas. I lived uh, at the time of this dream in the most fertile farming area in the whole world, the San Joaquin Valley of California. These areas were totally destroyed with drought and famine. Places that were once fertile were now arid deserts. Now, these so-called Christians were coming to the old man and his team of people, and they were explaining how they once had a relationship with Jesus, but had become cold in their faith and fell away from interest in a life of holy, passionate pursuit of God. Hmm. Now, for a short period of time, people were coming to Jesus in total surrender. I was able again to see above the globe, and what I saw was very, very unusual. Uh, I got to see certain regions of the earth where light rays were just coming out high into the atmosphere. It almost looked like uh, those, those big uh, searchlights, you know, with the shooting off the globe in many, many directions. I was given the ability to go down into these regions and actually see firsthand what was happening. And let me tell you, it was the most exciting thing I've ever seen beams of light and I began to see 12 regions in the United States of America and all over the globe where these beams would just come out and begin to shine into the atmosphere. When I got down close what I saw was mass revival hitting the earth and this was happening on a wholesale basis. Everywhere this was happening. Everywhere. People were praying for sick people and they'd be healed instantly. They would pray for blind eyes and they would open. They would pray for uh, dead people and they would resurrect. They were praying for the lost to come in and it was, folks, I tell you right now, I could, I could do a little Holy Ghost jig up here almost and start shaking and dancing and shouting in tongues or something. Let me tell you why. Because what I saw was the greatest thing I've ever, ever witnessed since I've been alive. Nothing I've ever witnessed on earth could compare to what I got to see. And this period of time lasted about three to four months, maybe six months max, maybe, maybe that long. It was so incredible. Regions were totally one for Jesus Christ. Now, a short period of time, this outpouring lasted and literally in, in regions there was complete light and then right next door, almost it would be like a city next to it, complete darkness there began to be an agitation in the spirit realm that was incredible. At this point where all these miracles and things began to happen, this, this world order began to be very, very angry because what was happening was beyond their control uh, of, of the ability to manipulate it and stop it from happening. And this makes the devil very, very mad. You know, he gets very mad when we start functioning in the real power of the living God. 
That's when he really starts pulling all stops out to try to do anything he can to stop the work of God. This was about to begin to happen. I began to see persecution on unprecedented scales. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. When Jesus came back today, he come back to Wednesday. He come to Wednesday. Mm, so he just like does he back. And my Jesus back over there on the tree. Oh, my Jesus mm. is coming back today, Jordan. Come back today, and he the I did that for him. Is the Jesus talking to me? Um, can you tell me what Jesus looks like? Yes, but Jesus looks like wonderful. He like chicken. He like chicken. He like sauce. He like chicken. Yes, he like sauce. He like chicken sauce. Yes, he like chicken sauce. I like chicken sauce. We two plates. One plate. My plate. My plate. My plate. My plate. My two plates. Plates? Yes, two plates. Who had two plates? And two for Ian. Two Jesus. And my Jesus is coming. And my Jesus is coming Wednesday. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. With the ongoing tensions with Russia and Ukraine and tonight, the U.S. has now closed its embassy in Ukraine's capital, moving American diplomats hundreds of miles away, citing the continuing buildup of Russian forces. Tonight, analysts now estimate up to 150,000 Russian troops surrounding Ukraine. And tonight, the Pentagon says Russia could move with little or no warning. Ukraine's President Zelensky addressing his nation today about reports intelligence picked up that actual date for an attack of Wednesday. If the world keeps on like this, that is what will happen for sure. Now, now, a woman asked a good question, and I also want to ask, how will we know when it starts? It will start with a boom. It's quite close, isn't it? Message? Yeah, from the show. Amazing. Did you guys watch it together? Yes. Let's have a look. Hey, Prince Harry, remember when you told us to bring it at the Invictus Games? Careful what you wish for. Boom. Oh, really? Please. Boom. Yeah, from the show. Oh, really? See you next Wednesday. First, birth of a nation. Then, Gone with the Wind, 2001, A Space Odyssey, Love Story, see you next Wednesday, and now, Schluck! Tonight it's See You Next Wednesday, starring Charles Lawton, Claudette Colbert, and Mickey Rooney. A fun-filled musical frolic through the leper colonies of Europe during the Thirty Years' War. Tomorrow evening's film is See You Next Wednesday, starring Jimmy Stewart, Donna Reed, and Stymie Beard in an action-packed war drama of defrocked missionaries in the Belgian Congo. How much is it taken? Three dollars. The gospel 
God sends his son into the world, the God-man, really man, really God, really human, really divine, lives a perfect life, fulfills the whole law, dies in the place of sinners intentionally, absorbs all the wrath of God against those who believe in him, takes away all their guilt, forgives all their sins, rises from the dead triumphant over death and hell and Satan, sins, rules with power from on high, will come again, give eternal life, raise from the dead all those who trusted in him. There is no better news.